I want to uh, welcome our speaker today, and this is Damaris Swant. She's a friend and so knowledgeable and so well known all over the country. Damaris lives in Alamo, Texas, and she uh, has been a postcard collector for many years and has kind of focused in on the uh, novelty postcards called HTL or Hold to the Light. And I'm going to let her tell you about them and show examples from her collection. And thank you, Damaris, for being here. And you're surrounded by friends and buddies and We'll all cheer you on. So thank you. And uh, we'll turn the meeting over to Damaris now. Thank you. Hello, and, and thank you all of you for coming to listen to me. Um, if you don't like Hold to Light postcards, too bad. I do. <laughs> anyway, this talk is about Hold to Light postcards. And Hold to Light postcards are those that you would look at in, in one, one direction or one scene, and when you held it up to a light, you would see something different. This is the Colombian Exposition of 1893 was when they had the first colored postcards. This is a postcard I found on the internet. A transparency appears in the blank space. I do not own this card, but I stole it from the internet. A hold to light postcard that is is one that when held to strong light, another scene appears. There are three distinctive types, transparencies, slide transparencies, and die cuts. The first is called transparency, called transparencies is made of three layers of paper bonded together. They are usually flat and when you hold them up to the light, um, a scene will show, a little scene will show through. Um, this one on the left is um, for Caudaline, and Caudaline was a a food additive or the Crisco of its time, but it was made with cottonseed and beef suet. And the, uh, the next one is the New Home Sewing Machine Company that used to be Johnson Clark and Company and is now Genome Sewing Company and it is still in business today. This is Gruß means greetings in German and DRGM 88690 is, was from 1912. In German, in in a German abbreviation for Dusch, Grus, Gru, Brus, Muster means design registered. This DRGM number seems to be on many postcards, although I found the same number on a number of postcards. So I'm not sure if that's a batch total or a series total or just the number they stuck on there. This postcard at the top the, with the ice skaters is also comes in English and it's in English, it says moon time. The Tower Bridge of London was printed in Prussia by Hartman Publishers. Uh, I could tell you a story about London Bridge. I, when I was in London, I took a, a Uber, Uber to go to the Tower of London. And he, he crossed the Thames when I said, um, you're going the wrong way. My daughter kept poking me saying, how do you, you don't know that? Never been here before. And I said, well, I've seen it on plenty of postcards. I know where I'm going. He's going the wrong way. We did, he did turn around and recross the Thames and he left us off in the middle of the bridge because we had run out of money that he had prepaid for Uber. Here's another example of a new, a new image appears when it's not related to the front of the image or doesn't really make sense until you read the translation which says, you are an elegant woman, just as vain as a peacock. And the sleeping girl it, with a light behind her eyes open and 
her dreams are of a prince. Meteor is a trans trademark for a transparent holds light postcards, and it was first used in 1898. Many patent numbers appear, but never have been patented. Um, this postcard was published by Kunst Verlag Ustad Rupke Wutmann in Hamburg, Germany. This postcard was canceled on December 30th, 1895. And the translation reads, congratulations on the new year. A meteor postcard has a very smooth surface. Three pieces were glued together. Many have a blank area where when held to the light, an image appears. In this top one, not sure that you can see it very well, but there's a train right in there. And then the Crystal Palace was printed by Luxus Paper Fabric Company of Wolf Hagelberg, and it produced, they produced a number of different designs in 1898. The Crystal Palace in London was built to house the Great Exhibition from May 1st to October 15th in 1851. It was burnt to the ground in, on November 30th, 1936. Meteor postcards were produced by many companies in Germany, but the most I have are from Wolf Hagelberg of Berlin. This is of Scotland. I'm not sure whether they took photos or, sorry, someone just came in my door. Um, and this is of the locks in Scotland. A real, this is a real photo postcard, uh, part of the transparencies. It is the color changes from black and white to color. The, the top one is the house, Houses of Parliament in London. And when the light is behind it, it shows St. Paul's Cathedral. And the bottom one is the St. James Palace, the changing of the guard. There are four groups in this category some of which I already mentioned, but day turns into night scenes. This is a Paris exhibition of the French market place. It was canceled at the exhibition. One is the, and the next one is the village hall. When it, you show all the light, you see, put a light behind it, all the people appear. Some called hold the light, postcards meteors, but that is an incorrect term. It, I don't know how it started, but anyway. This lady with the, has a hidden store that has been printed also in English. You often, in the English translation is, you often hear old people who have dreams about what they want. Now, dear friend, what do you think this means for this lady? And the fisherman, is catching a mermaid. Was that a bite, Fred, or just hiccups, he asked. And it was printed in Great Britain. A Illuminata postcard is, it's very dark and almost black with you see very little light coming through until you hold it to the light and it completely changes the color. This, of course, everyone recognizes the Eiffel Tower. And the next one is art Ill illuminated, and it's it also changes to color. And this second category is a slide transparency postcard. I asked many people if they had ever heard of this name before, and they hadn't. But I did find one. They are, as the name suggests, a slide transparency sandwiched between two layers of a post of paper. Some negatives were used, but mostly they were slides with the frame removed. After much searching and pestering of other people, this is what I found. It's a souvenir of Paris mailed from Richard Wood, New Jersey on August 14, 1900. A hole is cut into three layers of paper with the slide transparency sandwiched in the middle. 
the slide shows through all three layers. The third is die cut postcards. This process used a triple layer of paper pressed together. The first player paper had small shapes cut out and holes punched through the surface only. The second layer was usually a thin layer of tissue paper with color. And the bottom layer is for the address. When backed by light, the window shines the color of the middle layer. Some of the many colors, some have many colors on the middle layer. This is a Franco British exposition that was held May 14th to October 31st, 1908. And this ship is by, these ships are by Wolf Hagelberg, publisher, London and New York, and printed in Germany. This postcard was actually made as a Merry Christmas postcard. Samuel Couples Envelope Company of St. Louis, Missouri was the first one to use wood pulp for paper. They produced many patriotic covers and entered the postcard business early enough to make cards for the Spanish-American War. They have published the official, official card set for the Louisiana Purchase Exposition of 1904. These are all die cut postcards and these two are part of a set of six that are six by nine inches. If you notice in the upper right hand corner of the top card, there's a stamp on each of the cards. There's a stamp box on the front and it, um, the back of the card is blank for you to leave whatever kind of message you want. This is, the top card is the city hall and the second card is the Cascade Gardens in Grand Basin as part of the exhibition. More couples die cut postcards of the St. Louis Exposition. Um, it's some, it's a standard size four by six. And at, in, during my research, I found out that the inside in postcards were only given to those who lodged at the inn. Um, probably why they're so scarce today. I would like to mention that Mr. Couples, is, his home is now part of the historic landmarks of the United States um, in St. Louis, not far from Bush Stadium. During the 1899 Magira Hosmos Company of Budapest, Grass and Munich use chrome lithography in its printing. This is some April Fools postcards. And uh, I was told this story by Francis Grease that it, April 1st, April Fools Day is celebrated in France always with fish. People make paper fish, add tape and sneakily put it on the back of friends and family as they walk about. April Fools, Grant Holt from 1900 to 1914, published a variety of postcards of the Northeast and Florida. They actually went bankrupt in 1914 and they stopped printing in 1909. They, the whole Franz Holt company is better known, probably better known for its installment postcards. This one, top one is from the Hippodrome in New York City. Um, the others are from the American Track Park Row in St. Paul Building and Church in, and Grace Church, New York City. Uncle Sam Santas are the rarest. I do not have one, but here's a sample I found on the internet. They're really quite rare and very expensive. <laughs> Someone offered me one for like $2,000. I said, no, thank you. World War I propaganda hold to lights always show Germany as a beneficial um, person or army to those they invaded. Notice the Maltese cross on the left hand postcard on the top. I was mistaken calling it a swastika. 
look like one to me. All are labeled transparencies, but the front is cut out. And there are only two layers of paper. This is a street fight in Lowen, Germany, and it was occupied in 18, 1918. The second one on the top is was called Our Rich Troops, published by Martin Schlesinger in Berlin. And as you notice, the, the DRGM number was M518.59. I don't know what that means. And the next one is a seize of Przemysl, so Poland, on June 3rd, 1915. It, this town was retaken by Field Marshal von Muchensen's army. And the last one is German Austria, Hungary, and victorious. It was a fighting took place at Roker Pass, Russia, in the Carpathian. Dutch mountains. Kohler published some of the best die cuts of American views in 1904. A complete set has 113 views featuring views of New York, Philadelphia, Boston, Hudson River, Atlantic City, Buffalo, New York, Washington, DC, and Chicago, Illinois. They have brilliant colors with cut out with windows of red, blue, and yellow. The top one is the stockyards in Illinois. I'm assuming that because there were so many meat packing companies in Chicago, this is why this was made. And then the other is in Chicago was bathing in Union Park. And from the looks of it, it was quite popular. And these are the are two of Niagara Falls. From, one is from Hennepin Point. And the other view is from the suspension bridge near Niagara Falls, New York. Did you know that they closed the bridge in 1969 to make repairs at the bottom? Here is one of my favorites, namely because I've been there. I lived across the street. These are the swan boats in the public gardens. If you have never been to Boston, you may recognize this scene from Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCluskey. In the winter, people ice skate on the pond. I did that many times. This is Tremont Street and Park to Park Street subway station. This is a very distorted view because it's about a half a mile between the two stations, the one on the right end and the two on the left. The two on the left, one is to go down to the into the subway and the other one is to come up from the subway. Um, the third apartment building from the right is where my mother lived for many years on the fifth floor. It did not have an, it had an elevator, an old fashioned elevator that you kind of had to crack. They pull, pull the strings, do it yourself. What you can't see in this photo but I thought you might find interesting is that there is a burial ground just south of this. It's a lot of it is underground and it holds the bodies of Paul Revere, the five victims of the Boston massacre, John Adams, John Hancock and Robert Treat Payne. Robert Treat Payne was a signer of the Declaration of Independence but most people don't recognize his name. Madison Square Garden, New York City, was named after James Madison, the fourth president of the United States. Herald Square, also in New York City, was originally named for the New York Herald newspaper founded in 1835, yesterday's scandal sheet. In 1924, it became the Herald Tribune and you may recognize this as part of the chorus of Give My Regards to Broadway, which includes the phrase, remember me to Herald Square. Not quite what that reference means, but um, the circus on Coney Island, New York City Amusement Park opened in 1880. Coney Island was the largest amusement park in the country at that time. 
one on the bottom, Bathing and Heinz Pier in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It opened in 1898 by the Heinz Company, and it was open year round. It had many product displays, slide lectures, and gave out free samples of the Heinz Company from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In one of the rarest Kohler postcards is Fighting the Flames from the Coney Island set. This is a depiction of what were called disaster entertainments, which were popular among at many amusement parks. This spectacle at Luna Park used real fire engines as part of the entertainment. When I saw this postcard, I thought it was a real fire. I was mistaken. It's just part of their entertainment. Many Hold to Light postcards were made for the holidays. This was a birthday one. And the New Year's one was mailed on December 27th, 1900. And the translation says, wish you a happy new year. The number on this postcard denotes a sample. The message on the back of the postcard says, dear Flo, these are some old samples I thought you might like to put in your album. Jack. And the two models at the bottom were used for many postcards wearing the same clothes and or hats. I have 10 or 11, something like that, of these two models. I thought they were kind of cute. What I wonder is, did they get paid? <laughs> or were they just free child labor? This is a heart with celluloid windows it, they were cut through the entire view and the celluloid was put between the two pieces of paper. And then the two, beetle, two beetles are playing, a, one is playing a musical horn, a token of love. It's one of my favorites because it just not, no hearts in there, just these two beetles in love. And then love's token, she's mailing off her valentine. You missed one, okay. And here is St. Patrick's Day. God bless old Ireland. It's from Glendulo, Wicklow, Ireland. There is legend that says St. Patrick got rid of all the snakes in Ireland. However, during my research, I found out there were no snakes in Ireland for 400 years before St. Patrick's arrival. And here are some Easter dressed rabbits that are a popular subject i'm not sure that people know that there are also come on hold to light postcards the fourth of july and the bicentennial bicentennial of the 1976 independence hall um i remember that quite well because i had to dress my daughter up in a fancy gown <laughs> and of course there's that uncle sam again i have been told that there are no vintage hold to light Halloween postcards. However, I found a copy of one online, although it's not technically a hold to light postcard, it's considered more of a glow in the dark postcard. You would hold it up to a light and then it was dark. Some of my favorites use these same models, these two same models of these girls, and this comes in a set of six. Right now, I only have three. <laughs> and then there are some Santas. The one on the left was painted by Alfred Moritz Malik. He was born in 1869 and died in 1946. He was born in Dresden, Germany. He was a very prolific artist and book illustrator. He created numerous motifs for postcards. I actually found mention of hundreds of them that he had painted. In some of his paintings today sell for around $500 as do his postcards. Here we have Merry Christmas with Santa and some reindeer, not all eight, but it says Merry Christmas. And the second one, All Christmas Joy Be Yours. And these Santas are um, come in a variety of colors on his coats. And this is the eyes habit. I want to be happy too. 
There are at least five of these known. They're, usually they come in a set of six, but I haven't heard found a reference to the sixth one. And last but not least, a hold to light postcard made by our own Hal Ottaway sometime in the 1970s. The end. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Maris, that was fun. Uh, Bill Burton, let's go to you and see, uh, have you turn on your, uh, unmute yourself please, and uh, see what we have in the way of comments or questions or uh, helpful hints. <laughs> we can- Colin has been very good about uh, posting uh, things like the uh, Western New York Club's uh, website in, to uh, back up uh, what Rick said, told us about the, his meetings. Good, good. Yes, um, my, my apologize. I apologize for forgetting to say that. And also, you'll be able to get our link to the talk. On yep. the website. All, of, all of that information that anybody has, uh, has, has given us, uh, Alan has uh, put right up in the, uh, uh, on the chat window. So scroll through that if, uh, if you don't uh, if you didn't get it already. Um, Clarissa pointed out uh, about their monthly meeting uh, on Zoom on the, the 13th at seven o'clock, um, just sharing postcards with members uh, that contact her if you wanna get involved in that. Um, then there's a remark um, about the DRGM um, to the effect that, that again, this is the, uh, where you can go and look at what DRGM means um, and it's it's worthwhile. Um, uh, some uh, someone else, unfortunately, Zoom doesn't let you see the whole name of people. Uh, and the comment is, I believe the RGM stands for Deutsches uh, Reichsgebrauch uh, Muster, and was a way for inventors to register a product's design or use in Germany. Um, if anybody's German is better than mine, <laughs> which doesn't take much, um, please take a look at that. Um, then there's a question um, that says, uh, were the slide transparencies made by individuals or a company? Um, Damaris, is that something you know anything about? That is something I know nothing about. I was just, I, when I was looking up references, I found, a, came across this term and I really pestered people trying to find out if they'd ever seen one they knew anything about it, and everyone said no. And then I happened to find one on eBay, and I purchased it. Good work. Uh, and um, I've I've seen the reference. It's um, it was at the Chicago Museum. I'm not sure that that Chicago Postcard Museum. I'm not sure that museum still exists in Chicago, but it still has a something online last time it was anything was posted there was six years ago okay um i think this is from clara uh, clarissa that says april fools april 1st uh is also used to play tricks on others is that you clarissa yes yes this is correct they do they do fish and we were putting when i was a kid fish on the teacher's back <laughs> <laughs> and it was okay. They could not come protest, and we were laughing. So it is exactly right. The fish is related to uh, April Fool's Day. I'm not sure why. And then we're playing tricks too. Okay. Um, w. I, I Zoom annoys me because they will not let you see the whole name of the person. Uh, but W wrote, there's a brand of slide transparencies called a male novelty transparagraph, uh, a Valentine series card, I think the British made. I have seen several uh, floral and UK town views uh, as well. An example can be seen here, and then there's a link uh, to uh, vintagepostcards.com. Um, who is W here? That's Wynn and Barb from Toronto. Ah, Wynn, good. Uh, tell us more. Well, I have uh, I have four. Uh, only the um, 
floral versions. And I tried to find just now the website that I saw quite some time ago that had all sorts of uh, views of little small towns in the UK, I think. But anyway, it is, uh, uh, I don't know if I should try and hold this up. Please do. It doesn't usually work all that well, but so here you see the trans, it is the, the cellophane transparency as you see, and it has a little commentary about the flower. And when you, on the back, Oops, sorry. It'll be reversed. On the back. Oh, yeah. So you can see male novelty, transparagraph. And it says, um, only name and address of sender allowed. If any other writing, penny stamp is required. So <laughs> another clue that it's British and probably early 1900s. And I have four, and I think there's like 16 or something. <laughs> Fair enough. Does anybody else know anything about these slide transparency squares? Yeah, I have them. If you want to find them, you can look under Transparagraph on eBay. Oh. You can find them quite easily. Oh, really? Well, it's a, that's a term I hadn't heard before. Yeah, Thank you have you. to know the magic word. And, and once you do, <laughs> you can find them. So it's just Transparagraph, just trans, and then like transparency with a graph on the end, kind of. Well, it's yeah. the way it was spelled here, it's trans plus P A R O G R A F R A P H, not yeah. G R A P H, A G. Yeah. So, a sneaky little uh, switch on that from transparent uh, paragraph to paragraph. Okay. Um, we'll have to look for some more. <laughs> <laughs> moving right along, um, uh, M has written uh, Hal, tell us about the Hovel Light uh, postcard that you made. Well, my story on that is that uh, over the years, I've made a number, and I'm going to say maybe 30 or 40, something like that, of personal postcards. And my feeling is that when I come home from a meeting or something, or any event where people are giving out business cards, I'll look at them and I usually you accept them because somebody's giving it to you. But when I come home, I sort them out. Some I might keep and some I'll just throw away. Well, I got to thinking, surely no one would throw a postcard away. So instead of a business card, I would make a postcard showing what I was looking for, what I was collecting. And so I have them for lots of different topics, the World War II interest I have, the uh, uh, New Mexico uh, and Kansas uh, uh, views and just so forth and so forth. But anyway, this was one of the very first uh, personal postcards that I'd ever made. I didn't know how to go about it really, but I had this, uh, what you're seeing there, the man's face, I had that on a trade card, not a postcard. But I took that trade card to a printer, and at the time we were living in Norman, Oklahoma, and the man took a picture of it. Now this is all, you know, back in the 70s. So think about how much has transpired and have improved and everything in technology. But he, he made this and had it printed, and I wanted to have it all ready to give out to friends at the Wichita Postcard Show. So I opened my package, and I held it up to the light, and the, the face on the back was upside down. It just totally was upsetting and, you know, ho-hum, this, this won't work for this year. So then I had to do it for the next year. And then I got him to think about what he was printing. And yes, I needed the man's face, not upside down, but in the right position where you held it. That's telling you a lot more than you ever wanted to know. But that's kind of the story behind that first uh, personal card. Many of my cards have been done by Rick Gary and uh, other other artists, uh, uh, British artists and uh, fellows, and just a number. But it's been a lot of fun. 
and uh, I'm glad that I did that one transparency and that did come from a trade card, but that's kind of the story. Hal, you didn't happen to save any of those error cards, did you? I don't think so. I may have been so mad that... <laughs> you threw them all out? I don't know. I, yeah, I imagine I threw them away. No one would have wanted them, but you hey, know... I some said, of us collect error cards. I know. Goofy me, but uh, that's, uh, what, 50 years ago, so... <laughs> Let's not date ourselves. <laughs> yeah, but anyway... Well, a couple of other people have, have said uh, things like, great show, Damaris. Thank you, Damaris, for, for your presentation and all your efforts. Um, Damaris, you did a wonderful job. Um, Damaris, I'm going to go back through all of my postcards uh, with a light behind. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, nice. finally, there's a, uh, a remark. Well, well, somebody else just jumped in with another one. To get the Zoom link for Monday night's meeting uh, for the Western New York Postcard Club, um, you can find this here on the chat window. Um, and making a postcard instead of a business card, says someone, is a great idea. Uh, Hal, thanks for explaining how you did that. Um, <laughs> But my guess is that there will be a couple of people who are going to write to you and say, can you do this? Can you, can you explain this in greater detail? Sure. Be glad to email or uh, I'll, I'll do anything you want me to do. Just, just let me know. And before, uh, Bill, before we close, anybody that, you know, we have all of these links and things on that chat window. And anybody could go to the chat window and and copy what that, you know, that information and then put it on, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, but put it on your notes window or something where you can print it off later or look at it later. Because once this closes, then that information disappears. So before we close, please copy off or write down uh, any of those links that you want to uh, refer to later. Does that make sense? I, yeah. It does to me, but I didn't write it down, so. Okay, okay. Al, if there's anything, yes, yes. This is Dennis. Just to let everybody know, if you open up your chat window, then down where you're posting things, there's three ellipses, the three dots, and you can open that up and click on Save Chat. And in the, uh, I'm using an iMac, and in that, it actually saves a text file of all the information in the chat window. Wow, Dennis, you're great. <laughs> I've never seen that before. So you might want to change. I, I've got the chat window open as a separate dialog box. Yes. And it shows up there. But uh, you might experiment with that. And you can also do what you're talking about, yeah. uh, select everything and then put it into another uh, notepad or something. Yes. Oh, Dennis, that's great. Good for you. So does another everybody... comment from W uh, says uh, the possible way of Poisson de Avril is here. And there's a, a link um, to a website uh, that says frenchtogether.com and then goes on a little bit. So that would be something to take a look uh, at. And another comment from Kay says, I love my HTML cards, uh, but now I love them even more. Thanks. Thank you very much, Damaris. Uh, you're I, welcome. <laughs> you might as well just get a, a large card and put it up that says you're welcome because there've been <laughs> enough. I've never seen as many thank yous as, for a talk as I've uh, just seen now. Well, that's nice wonderful. work. That's the end of the uh, the comments. Um, yeah. I, I actually, I have a, a large here. audience. Oh, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Excuse me. Yeah, I have a question. I think got missed. Is there anything about these cards? Like when you look at the front of them, at least what, what we've seen from um, Damaris's uh, presentation, they just look like ordinary cards. Is there any kind of markings or any annotation or whatever that tells you it's a whole delight, or it, you can just it, go through everything and hold them to the light? You, it usually says somewhere on the front, a hold to the light, or it's in German, I don't, can't pronounce it, but it, you kind of get, you look at a few and you'll, 
you'll see that it says they all they all say hold to the light okay. hold to the light or hold to lich lichty um or, or, or just whatever. Say a half moon on the front of the cards too yeah and sometimes if it, um, a die cut postcard you can usually tell because they have the holes are right on the very top layer it's the transparencies that are a little harder to see um, but they mostly say hold to light on on the front of the postcard or that word meteor sometimes too oh, okay yeah yeah okay anybody else want to go live <laughs> we can do this yeah thank okay. you I, I had a question the comments then oh sorry yes, somebody John. had a question uh, Damaris, in your talk, you mentioned installment postcards, but I don't know what installment postcards are. Can you oh, okay. tell, me, in, tell us? An installment postcard is a, a scene or a person or, well, let's just say a scene. And it's usually made in more than one postcard, kind of like a puzzle. And people okay. would mail one today, one tomorrow, one the next day if there were three or four pieces. Or, and then when you got all of the postcards and you put them together, they would make one scene. Thank you. Very good, like an alligator or like a Santa Claus or like right. a Christmas tree. I've uh, seen cards like that, but yeah, I never knew what they were right, called. Right, installment cards. Yeah, good, good, John. Thank you. Was hoping this was a hold to light, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Just a nice early card. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. What exposition was that from? St. Louis? The World's Columbian Exposition. I okay. I'd be in I Chicago. I have a set of the, uh, four of them. And yeah. uh, Mara showed, said that yeah. there is one yeah. that's made. So, so I had to go in and see it. But good, good I, keep, I kept holding it up to light <laughs> in the other room. and. Oh, well, try a little stronger light. It still might be there. Sometimes transparency <laughs> postcards, the middle layer fades. And I couldn't tell you why. Maybe it was just the ink they used um, or they just get old uh, and it doesn't always show through or it shows through very faintly. I have one thing I'd like to add. I'm sorry, I don't know how to use chat. This is Gregory Page. This is something called a peak of you postcard even though it says it's five cents to mail. So the card looks like this. Yes. And attached to it <laughs> is this little view scope. <laughs> and inside that, there is a transparency that you look through. Yes. This, this one happens to have a Mississippi River steamboat because that's what I collect. So it's a peak of view postcard, even though it admits that it's a five cent postage. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. That's fun. Kind of an, an attachment. Yes, type attachment postcard. postcard. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you, Gregory. Now, I think I'd like to jump in here and, and uh, explain um, the, the answer to Damaris's question about the Chicago Postcard Museum. Yes. The Chicago Postcard Museum was an internet project done by a young member of the South Jersey Postcard Club back in the late 1990s. Around 1997 or 98, a young 12 year old girl showed up at one of our uh, POCAX annual events and she was with her mother. It was the only postcard collector we had ever had who came to the show with her mother. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and and um, she was very much interested in Chicago because the very first vacation the family ever took was to see Chicago. Later on, she went on to college and got very interested in postcards. She's still collecting. She is still the youngest member of the South Jersey Postcard Club. And she has an affinity for soldiers mail. And at present, although she is now married and busy with, with her young life, uh, she is working on a project where she is going to prepare a, a volume or maybe two volumes, one from the European Theater of Operation, one from the Pacific 
theater of operation, World War II communication on postcards. It's going to be a blockbuster when the time comes. Wow. So she chose Chicago. She chose the name Chicago Postcard Museum because of the name, she wanted it to be the name of her internet project. And that's, that's the answer to why um, the Damaris observed that there have been no postings there since 2006. Is that what you said, Damaris? I it was something like that. 2006 was the last posting. Yeah, yeah. For the for the for the last 15 years, uh, this this young lady has been involved with with uh, a college, a career, a marriage, and soon to be family. And uh, they're they're just. Uh, uh, the Chicago Postcard Museum has just been abandoned, but uh, a, a lot of that information is very worthwhile, and she has done a lot of sincere research there, and and uh, she's decided to leave it. So no, that's no brand answer. has just uh, posted the uh, link to the Chicago uh, Postcard Museum uh, in the chat window. So if anybody wants to go see that or pick it up, go to the chat window. Thank you. Thank you, all of Susan. Anything else? Uh, I I saw a note there asking where can someone read about the whole to light, and I'm looking at uh, Mary Martin and Dave Bauer's book to see if they indicate it, and I don't see anything there. But the Ryan, uh, the Ryan and uh, oh gosh, Miller. Miller Miller book. I I can't believe they don't have it. So just. Check with your library if you don't have that book. Uh, read, um, it's, the title is a little bit 1889 no. to 1914. Post, post. Postcard history. Oh, is that it? Who's helping me? Kyle. Kyle. Always helpful. Oh, here we go. One of the best resources I know of, but it does, you have a cutoff date, but Holtz lights were yeah. around 1916. Postcards that, in the United States, 1893 yeah. to 1918. Yeah, fabulous yeah. book. My only co negative comment is the paragraphs are too long. So they really <laughs> did, did their work. Sometimes you'll find it as Miller and Miller. No, Ryan and Miller and Miller and Miller, depending upon what year it was published. Or Ryan. <laughs> when she right. left him off. There was a yeah. divorce in there. <laughs> Good there is a website I found called Max and Company Post. Mm -hmm. M-A-X-A-N-D-C-O-P-O-S-T dot com. It's got information about, about them there. Could yes, you I, type that into the, uh, into the chat window, please? I sure will. How wonderful. This is great that we've had so much uh, interchange and Thank you, Damaris, for- uh, oh, You're welcome. This has been uh, spectacular. Uh, one last thing, uh, please remember the best cat man ever, January 22 in two weeks, and Clarissa's <laughs> talk on COVID postcards on February 5. <laughs> we are so grateful always to Phil McDaniels for the Wichita Postcard Club's newsletter, monthly newsletter, in full living color. I can't get over that, uh, how beautiful each issue is. It's always on time. And uh, we thank you, Phil, very, very much for uh, a good newsletter and all the links that we need to uh, find the next club meeting. Thank you again. If, um, if there's no other uh, comments, are there? Nothing on the chat window. Okay, well. I just have a quick quickie. I really? did see the, I saw the movie about Lewis Wayne a few weeks ago. Good. It was, it was very entertaining. Good, good. Michael I, Block I, posted the uh, Max and Company uh, website. So that's in the chat window. Thank you one and all. This has been ex exciting and great fun and a good way to start January, isn't it? A whole new year. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Damaris. Thank you, Damaris.
Thank oh, you. you're welcome. Very and it's nice to see you face to face. <laughs> that was great, Damaris. You did a good job. Well, thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. That's sweet. Everything.